So I was a classroom teacher um, at the high school level for 10 years. And what I saw in my classroom with students, mm -hmm. um, I realized that we have a, a large issue with our population and supporting our population. We have parents working two and three jobs trying to raise families. And that's the number one issue I think that, that people are facing today is that everything is a struggle and um, there's essentially not much of a middle class left. So I was um, mm -hmm. selected for a fellowship to Washington DC to learn to write policy through the Department of Energy. Um, so when I was in DC with that fellowship, I learned that how policy and well-written policy can change people's lives for the better, including those of my former students and students today and, the, and their families. And that's what really drove me to, to run for this office. I have a, I have a lot of qualifications. Um, I was a high school teacher for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I have a bachelor's degree in biology and Spanish. I have a master's degree in anthropology and I am midway through a PhD in educational policy. So I have, um, I've also been a small business owner for um, over 20 years and I think all of those things put together um, combined with the fact that I'm from central Indiana and I'm a seventh generation resident. I'm also a first generation college graduate. Um, those experiences give me a perspective that I think is, is unique in this field and I have the background and experience now of writing policy and having written a law that, or written a bill that passed into law while I was in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm uniquely qualified, I think, for this position. So the bill that I wrote, um, I was given a little project to do in the fall of 2018, and basically they said, we have this constituent who wants to do this project, can you take it as far as you can? What ended up with that project was a bill to establish a monument for the 19th Amendment on the National Capitol grounds um, that was introduced into legislation and then um, reintroduced in January of 2019 with the new Congress. And I rewrote the bill um, for the new congressman coming in. It was passed, it passed the House and then it passed the Senate and was signed into law in um, 2020 in December. So on the heel, yeah, on the heels of that, um, when that was in the fall of my my fellowship. So it was when I first was in Washington D.C. So within a month of me getting there, I did that. Uh, I think we have um, we are facing a, ch a choice of upholding democracy or not upholding democracy. And I think there is no gray area in this election. So at every level, we're looking at people who are um, attempting to undermine the democratic process. We saw that in January 6th with the insurrection. We're seeing that in Indiana with Senate Bill 1. Um, we're seeing it, you know, we saw the rejection of that in Kansas um, with their similar, their law similar to Senate Bill 1 that they put on as a referendum, which we're not able to do in Indiana. And I think that those are the most pressing issues is we have a process for democracy that works as long as we all support it. So when we undermine the democratic process, it removes people's voice from decisions that are being made um, in Washington or at the State House. And when you have an overwhelming majority of people who express their opinion one way um, and people who are in power who are um, voting a different way, that's not a true representative government. So right now, I think we need to work at codifying um, reproductive freedom, which would be upholding Roe versus Wade. That's a, a priority because when we have those personal freedoms that start to erode, um, it just leads to more, more freedoms being removed. Public education, is one of my top priorities always and supporting public education with public dollars is, is one of my main priorities. Um, being in the classroom and seeing how teachers are have been deprofessionalized and um, 
are facing increased scrutiny from um, just the general public from in people inflaming issues that are really non-issues. Um, so I, I, public education is, is one of the biggest um, concerns I have to, to, to work on. And that can be done through federal means um, in the accountability and testing, um, removing some of those barriers for teachers in the classroom through eliminating some of the testing procedures and retooling the entire system. Um, that, that's a big priority of mine. Um, the other thing is health care. So we, we are in a, still in a health care crisis. We're better than we were. Um, I think health care needs to be completely decoupled from employment. So we have a system that's based on, health care is based on your employment. Um, we have some supplemental systems that go outside of that, but if we have an entire federal system that puts health care on, attaches health care to the person and not to the employer or the job, then people can make decisions for their employment and their vocation not based on health care. And that's dry, health care based decisions for employment and vocation are the basis of many um, people making decisions of where they're going to work and what they're going to do.